Having surrounding themselves with more than a thousands of islands, picturesquely scattered along the winding and very extended coastline of the Adriatic Sea, Croatia began to be considered an ideal country for sailing both among professionals and beginner yachtsmen. The water area here has crystal transparency and purity. It is closed from storm winds and waves, typical for the open sea, and in the development of the infrastructure of Croatia in recent years, has become the leader in the whole Mediterranean. Here you can find an anchorage for every taste. Retire to one of the many wild bays, some of which are equipped with buoys. Stay in a comfortable marina and get a maximum of amenities and excellent service, or moored in the very center of events right across the urban embankment, most of which equipped with moorings. In this video, we will look at a simple seven days yachting route in central Dalmatia, which is quite suitable for beginner skippers. The closest marinas to Split International Airport are located either in the city of Trogir or directly in the city of Split itself. Trogir is even closer, but we will start our sailing trip in Split. The main marinas of the city are Spinet Marina, Zenta Marina, and ACI Marina Split, which you can reach in about half an hour by taxi. Saturday is a chaotic day in every marina, especially in one of the largest Dalmatian marinas. Once you have settled in, it is recommended to head ashore for some reconnaissance. Split, the second largest city in Croatia, is definitely worth a visit and can be reached from the pier within a 30 minutes walk. Follow the coastline and make your way to the lively Riva Promenade, which is lined with palm trees and dotted with street performers. The stunning view of historic buildings and the sea will make your walk enjoyable. Split was established around the ancient palace of the Roman Emperor Diocletian, who chose to retire on the warm shores of the Adriatic Sea. The palace is the central and most important part of the architectural ensemble and has been inhabited almost continuously since Roman times. After Diocletian's reign, the palace complex was occupied by others and gradually developed into a hub of private and apartment houses, churches and chapels. The sites of Split are listed as UNESCO World Heritage Sites, and the old town still showcases remnants of Roman walls, squares and temples. In the morning of the next day, you leave the starting marina. Be careful the traffic of ferries and cruise ships around Split is quite heavy. We recommend you go to the island of Sholta to enjoy its many wild bays and swim in the crystal clear Adriatic water, and then spend the night in the town of Milna on the neighboring island of Brach. The whole passage will take no more than 20 nautical miles. When you reach Milna, you can stay overnight in Vlaska Marina or ACI Marina Milna. Both marinas are well protected from all winds. Near the Vlaska Marina, there is even a nice beach where you can have a nice tip in the evening. Milnet is a small town that can be explored in a short time. If you come here in the summer, you may be lucky enough to be in one of the many local cultural events. The delicious restaurant Bago is just around the corner from the Vlaska Marina. In addition to fish, it also serves lamb. The third day Monday and we set off along the southern coast of the island of Brach towards the town of Bull. The final destination of this day will be Stary Grad on the island of Far. But first we will admire one of the most famous beaches in the world, Zlatni Rat this narrow beach of tiny golden pebbles, whose landscapes are transformed by the influence of winds and currents, stretches 600 meters into the open sea. Surrounded by pine trees, it constantly changes the shape of its outlines. Due to the unusual shape of the relief, it is included in the list of specially protected areas in Croatia. Be careful when approaching him. Around it are many kiters and windsurfers. Anchoring is prohibited, but there are several buoys to the east of the Cape so your crew can land on the beach in a dinghy. So then we are on our way to the island of Far, to Stary Grad, where we will stay for the night. The entire route from Milna will take about 30 nautical miles. Stary Grad, one of the oldest cities in Europe, is located in the northern part of the island, in the depths of a six-kilometer bay. Stary Grad was originally named Pharos by Greek settlers from the island of Peros. During the Roman period, the city was known as Furia. The name Var appeared with the arrival of the Slavs. When the administrative center of the island was moved south to the current city of Far on the south coast, the old town was simply called Stary Grad. The main attractions of the city of Stary Grad are the Dominican Monastery, the Basilica of Saints Mary and John, numerous churches in the city and its environs. The next day we will travel through the wild bays of the Paklinski Islands and spend the night in the town of Far. The Paklinski Islands are a group of islands and rocks near the Dalmatian coast of the Adriatic Sea. These limestone islands are located near the town of Far, less than a kilometer south of it. 
The Paklinski Islands are known as Hell Islands. The roots of this name go back to antiquity, when resin was boiled here on barren land, which was impregnated with the wood of ships. This occupation was accompanied by huge clouds of smoke that clouded everything around. This site reminded observers of Hell's Kitchen. However, the words hellish and resinous are spelled the same in the Croatian language, which could also cause a massive misunderstanding about the name of these islands. Today, the Paklinski Islands are one of the most popular European resorts for nudist holidays. Uncover your binoculars, Captain. Having plenty of swimming and sunbathing in any of the bays you like, head to far. It is advisable to have time to do this in the first half of the day, because if you arrive in the afternoon during the peak season, all the places, both at the pier and on the buoys, are usually occupied. In this case, you can go to the Antrich in one of the bays of the islands of Street Clement or Marinkovac, or in ACI and Marina Palmazana on the island of Street Clement. The municipal marina of Far is located on the city promenade on the eastern shore of the bay. These are 15 mooring places at the pier. She also owns paid buoys for yacht parking under the western shore of the bay. The best view of the city of Far opens from the sea. Milky white and brown houses are scattered around the bay. Everywhere you can see the greenery of pines and palms. When you step off the ship onto solid ground, a medieval city opens up before you, with many narrow pedestrian streets and old stone houses. Var is known for its crystal clear waters, lavender fields, and bustling nightlife. The city offers numerous attractions, such as the impressive Street Stephen Square, the charming Franciscan Monastery, and a lively farm market. However, the main attraction of Var is undoubtedly its magnificent fortress, located on a hill overlooking the city. To reach the fortress, also known as Fortica, visitors can take a scenic walk up the hill, passing through a botanical garden filled with a variety of plants and trees. At the top of the hill, the fortress stands tall at an impressive height of 628 feet. The fortress in Afar has a rich history dating back to the 16th century, when it was built to protect the city from invaders. Throughout the centuries, the fortress has been occupied by various armies and has undergone several renovations, making it a fascinating blend of different architectural styles. There are a museum, art gallery, and a small prison located within the fortress of Far that provides a glimpse into the harsh realities of life for prisoners in the past. The prison was built in the early 19th century and was used to incarcerate political dissidents and other criminals. Visitors can see the narrow cells, which were designed to hold multiple prisoners and were often overcrowded and unsanitary. The conditions in the prison were notoriously harsh, with prisoners often subjected to cruel punishment and torture. Today, the prison serves as a stark reminder of the injustices of the past and the importance of upholding human rights. But the main thing for which it is worth climbing to this height is stunning view of the city and the surrounding islands. It is recommended to visit the fortress during sunset, when the sky is painted in beautiful shades of orange and pink, creating a truly unforgettable experience. When visiting the fortress, be sure to wear comfortable shoes, bring water, and take your time to fully appreciate the beauty and history of this iconic landmark. Early Wednesday morning, we will sail to the island of Vis, where we will moor in the village of Kamaisa. Here you can book an excursion to the Blue Cave on the small neighboring island. The cave is located on the east side of Bisevo Island, and the boat ride takes approximately 20 to 30 minutes. Once you arrive at the cave entrance, you will need to transfer to a smaller boat with a guide who will take you inside the cave. The entrance to the cave is quite small, so the boat must be small enough to fit through the opening. Inside the cave, you will experience the beautiful blue light that is created by the sun shining through an underwater opening. It's a unique and unforgettable experience. The Sevo Island's Blue Cave is a magical sight worth seeing between 9.30 and 11.30, but it can be overcrowded during the summer months. In contrast, the Sevska Luka Bay has a lovely sandy beach and restaurant, though it is not well protected from strong winds. After this little adventure, we return to the island of Vis. This island surprises visitors with its unspoiled natural beauty and rich fishing traditions, having been closed off to foreign visitors until 1989. Kamesa, a charming port town, boasts friendly locals, delicious seafood, and local wines, while this town on the opposite side exudes an ancient atmosphere. You can visit them one by one. The island is also home to local vineyards, olive groves, and pine trees that enhance its pristine ambience, so you can perfectly resupply your provisions. On Thursday, we have the longest passage, about 30 miles across the open sea to the town of Rogoznitsa. After a long, tiring transition, 
you will be thankful to find yourself in a peaceful place hidden from the winds and bad weather. Rogoznitsa, a picturesque town on the central Dalmatian coast, is a perfect destination for yacht enthusiasts. Located in a deep bay, the town offers safe and comfortable mooring options for yachts of all sizes. You can stay in the huge comfortable Frepa Marina, or save some money and moor directly to the city pier on the promenade. The Marina Frappa, one of the largest and most beautiful marinas in the Adriatic, is located in the heart of the town and offers state-of-the-art facilities, including 400 berths, repair and maintenance services, restaurants, bars, and a hotel. Aside from its excellent mooring options, Rogoznitsa has a rich history and many sites to explore. The town's history dates back to the Illyrian and Roman times, and it has been an important trading center since the Middle Ages. The town's architecture reflects its long and fascinating history, with medieval stone houses, churches, and narrow alleys. One of the most remarkable sites in Rogoznitsa is the Dragon's Eye Lake, also known as Zmadevo Oko. According to legend, the lake was formed by a dragon that lived in the area and caused great destruction. A brave knight fought the dragon and defeated it, and as the dragon fell, its eye created a deep crater that filled with water. To get to the dragon's eye, you can take a short walk from the marina, following a well-marked trail through the pine forest. The lake is surrounded by rugged cliffs and dense vegetation, creating a stunning and mysterious atmosphere. You can swim in the crystal clear water, or simply admire the natural beauty of the place. According to local legend, girls who swim in the waters of the Dragon's Eye Lake in Rogoznitsa will find their true love in the near future. It is also said that the lake water has healing properties and can help treat some illnesses. However, like with any legend, this is purely folklore, and it should not be relied upon as a guide for action. Well, Friday has come, and it's time for us to return to the Split Marina. As a general rule, all charter companies in Croatia require you to return to your home marina before 5 p.m. on Friday. But if you manage to agree in advance that you will return the boat on Saturday morning, then you can also visit Trogger. If you wish, you can do it on Friday, because it is only 12 miles away. Trogger is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and its historic center is a must-see for any visitor to the city. The city's architecture reflects its long and fascinating history, with Gothic, Renaissance, and Baroque buildings coexisting in a harmonious ensemble. The most famous sites in the city include the Cathedral of St. Lawrence, the Camerlengo Fortress, and the Sipico Palace. The city, which is located on a small island, is surrounded by the crystal-clear waters of the Adriatic Sea and offers a range of mooring options for yachts of all sizes. The ACI Marina Troger, one of the most modern and well-equipped marinas in the Mediterranean, is located on the western side of the island and offers 162 berths for yachts up to 25 meters in length. The marina is within walking distance of the city center, making it an ideal base for exploring the city's many sites and attractions. So Split is within easy reach, and our sailing trip is coming to an end. I hope you have learned some useful information from this video. This is just one of the itineraries, and you will see many more soon. So do not forget to subscribe to our channel and write in the comments what other nuances you would like to know in such videos. And I say goodbye to you, see you soon on the channel, Sailing Click.